Hey Clashes, we have a new community event in the game and I think this event will be the new favorite of many players out there. Because currently there is one big problem within the game. And that is, well, you cannot use your heroes while they're upgrading. This is having a ton of problems. First off, you're missing out on a lot of power when your heroes are sleeping and you can't use them in your army. This is making your attack way worse. But not only that, you're missing out on a lot of fun, because with the new equipments, the heroes are the most fun part of your army, and sending in a giant arrow, or fireball, or any other equipment into a village is a lot of fun, and not being able to use those makes the game less attractive. So Supercell is trying to really take a look at this problematic with this event, because now the important dates, starting on the 1st July, you will be able to use your heroes while they're upgrading. Yes, you have heard that right. You can use your heroes during the event while they are upgrading, which is amazing. Obviously now the next question is going to be, how long is this event going to last? For how long can you use your heroes while they are sleeping? The answer to this question is quite simple. This is relying on a couple of milestones the community can unlock within the next couple of days. Starting today, really important, starting today you can collect Dark Elixir until the 30th June, which means overall around about 6 days. Depending on how much Dark Elixir the entire player base of Clash of Clans can collect, the event is going to be longer or shorter. There is some things to mention with the milestones. The first milestone is going to extend the event by one day. For that, as a community, we have to collect 70 billion Dark Elixir. To make sure that the event is getting extended three days, we have to loot overall 100, uh, 100 billion Dark Elixir, which is quite a bit. Third milestone. Third milestone is going to be 125 billion Dark Elixir and it's going to extend the event by six days. Next milestone, milestone number four, is going to be 150 billion Dark Elixir and it's going to extend the event for overall nine days. And the next milestone, the last one, is going to be the fifth milestone with overall 160 billion and it's going to extend the event for 12 days. If we can unlock the last milestone, this event is going to last for over 31 days. The entire July month. I mean, that's just crazy. That's just super, super cool. Based off of those numbers, though, this means that the base amount of the event is going to be 19 days because you can extend it by 12 days, which means it's 31 days then. So baseline of the event should be 19 days. And as I said earlier, we can extend this with looting as much as possible as a community. We can extend this to the entire month of July. It's kind of crazy. And I'm really happy that Supercell is going to do that. But now with all of those information shared, there is a speculation on my side why I think Supercell does this. Because they have already answered in a lot of recent Ask Me Anything posts on Reddit or anywhere that, well, those hero books and everything around it are one of their main revenue incomes. And missing out on that is kind of drastic. Or at least I guess this is what this event is all about. They want to figure out how drastic it actually is if you can use your heroes for upgrading. Maybe if it's not as drastic, we could see those events more often. Maybe it's a permanent thing. Who knows? But that will be my speculation, I think, on why they are doing this event. They really want to figure out how much revenue income it actually is. And maybe there are still a lot of other clashes out there who are still jamming their heroes, who are still using and buying those books of heroes to actually have a faster progression with their hero level, even though they could use them while upgrading. Either way, I think this event is going to be amazing. Let me know what you are thinking about this event. But an obvious thing is if you're looting more Dark Elixir, you should have more Dark Elixir in your storages. And with that, you can then activate more, that's right, super troops. So I will share yet again another attack with my current favorite strategy, 
This one is just insanely powerful. And I can already tease you guys, there's going to be a top three ranking strategy uh, video for, for the current meta, I guess, uh, really soon. And this strategy, um, well, I don't want to spoil too much already, but it's going to be maybe considered for the top three. And I've seen a lot of concerns about why people might think, is it really that strong? The fireball, you have to do a quick warden walk. There are some downsides. I will show you exactly why I think this strategy is this strong currently and why I have not failed a single attack while using this strategy. Let's dive into it. And I think one of the main concerns I've seen from players is that this might be not as flexible as, uh, well, a warden charge, for example, with the regular healers. Um, and I would really disagree on that one because this warden walk is not about getting like 10,000 scatter shots, 10 millions merge cannons, I don't know, whatever. It's all about just creating pathing. So looking at this base, we could obviously try to go for a crazy fireball near the expos because I mean, that obviously looks really, really nice. Um, but at the same time, we could just try to set up pathing, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go Let's use this top side for this compartment with the fireball, okay? So we're just going to place the ward in. We're going to use the earthquake here and use the fireball right away. We don't go for crazy value. It is just to make sure... Now this witch is warden, please come back. That would be appreciated. Thank you. Um, so we're just going for this, for this pathing. Now, let's do this on the top side with the siege barracks. We can have already some heaters here. We're going to, as always, send the queen in and send the... Uh, sent the king in and sent the queen in on the outside. Another wall break, now the phrase here. We can add some more droids. Make sure we get all of those wall breaks in. The king is unfortunately not really going there, but that's fine. But technically with this, the super witches cannot die. This strategy overall is pretty similar to what the mass droid army currently is, if you have ever seen that one. But in my opinion, it has just way more power. Like this super witch army has just a thousand more, uh, more time power than like any other mass root army because you have those super witches as carries and the fireball as I said is pretty much only to create pathing and obviously at the same time you're still trying to take as much value on your way doing so as possible but it's not really relying as the fireball with a multiple hero charge it's not really relying on I don't know how to say it. oh we said druid's left right let's deploy them Stop talking it through, less con uh, like more concentrating on the attack. So it's less about like having the fireball value in buildings, it's more about like having the fireball value in, well, just pathing. That is the more important thing, which is just created so easily. Do you remember the meta of like Town Hall, I don't know, 14 or something, I think, where Queen Charge Hybrid was pretty strong? The cool thing about Hybrid was always that it's not, it's not about like Queen Charging, like specific buildings it was more about like setting up the hybrid setting up the pathing of the troops and this is what this is all about as well it could not get any simpler than this and this is in fact like as flexible as possible and at the same time really quick to plan which is obviously then as well perfect for legends so as i said i've done now attacks in front of challenges because some of my friends did not believe me i have not played with this so they were trying to like trick me even with like troll test up arms and everything but nothing has worked so far even with losing the warden early on in the water walk i have still tripled because of the druid and super witch army composition and combination it is just insane but as i said earlier already i will upload really soon like a top three ranking of strategies what i think are currently the best strategies in the game for 10 or 16 and well i hope you enjoyed the video and let me know what you think about the new event and make sure that you're farming as much dark elixir as possible so everyone can enjoy the hero event much longer thank you so much for watching i wish you guys back tomorrow with the next video other then see ya and bye bye